Hey Wampers, and welcome to another follow along video. After we have created the famous 3D donut in the last one, we are now diving into making characters. In this video, I'm going to make you more familiar with curves. They are an essential part to more complex creations in Womp. But don't worry, we are going to start fairly simple by making a cute little dinosaur character like this one. So let's jump straight in. So first, let's go to our top bar and open up the primitives menu. Here we find our curves primitive. And what you need to know about curves is that they come inside of a union. And if you want your curves to be affected or affecting other primitives, they need to be inside of the same union. Now, curves consist out of points. We have different kind of settings in the curve itself and in the curve points. In the curve setting, we can, for example, change the primitive at the top, or we can change the roundness and density. More about that in a bit. But for now, let's start with the curve point. Here we can, for example, round up our primitive. So we can use a cylinder to round it up to have a rounded cylinder. We want to use a cylinder-based curve rather than a sphere-based curve, just because it gives us a bit more control over the shapes and form. So here I'm just scaling it up a little bit and navigating it up to where we want to start with the hat. I'm gonna make this fully rounded so it's, you know, a nice rounded shape for the hat. And I'm just scaling it by using the arrows and the gizmo. And then I'm actually copying the curve point by holding down Alt and just dragging it to another point. As you see in the scene list, it has now created point 2. So this is what you will see me do here. I'm just holding Alt and dragging it to create another point and the curve will create a transition between the curve points automatically. Now, as I'm going down with the body, I'm scaling this up and a lot bigger just because I want to really exaggerate the shapes of the dinosaur. So I'm making the body really thick and I'm giving it this, you know, this belly, this rounded shape at the bottom. So I'm letting it come out and then go in a little bit more again. Now, once we come to the tail, we want to scale it really small and as rounded as possible again. Now, to make this a little bit imperfect and not so symmetrical, I am going to extend the tail very upwards and more to the right. This gives it this really nice flow of the body. It's almost like an S shape, which is a very pleasing shape for the, for the form and the flow of the character. Now, then towards the end of the tail, I'm making it very, very thin and small. So I think that's looking really nice for the base of the body and with that I can now also show you what the curve settings actually do. So first off the roundness is basically how edgy the transition or how smooth the transition between the curve points are. If you increase it to 10 it's super smooth, if you have it on 1 it has this very stylized edgy kind of style. While the density is pretty much out of how many shapes the curve is made out of. So if you want a very smooth curve you want a really high density and if you want a low density that's maybe for some patterns where you have like a bit of spacing between the shapes. That can also be really cool for some things but in this case we want it as smooth as possible and that's why we also increase the goop strength a little bit which also makes the body even a little bit thicker. So now we can call this union the body and close it down. And then we go back to our primitives menu, get out a new curve and pretty much do the same thing. Delete the second point, change it to a cylinder in the properties menu. And now we can do another little trick, which is activate the mirror. This also works on curves and speeds up our process on this quite a bit, because now we are going to do the legs of the dinosaur. And for that, it's basically the same principle. We round up our cylinder so they're more smooth and we rotate them inwards a little bit so they come out of the body. Then just copy the curve points by pressing Alt. I'm also scaling them a bit smaller and thicker depending on the points. This can create some really dynamic shapes. And especially at the bottom, I let it come out a little bit towards where the feet are facing. This really helps. And now we can see that the, the legs are actually not that smooth, so we go back into the curve settings, increase the density, just to see they are still not that smooth. And we can fix that by just increasing the goop strength a little bit. 5 is probably already enough, but we are going to do 10, just so they are a bit more thicker and cute looking and more fitting to the body. 
And we also need to make sure, of course, they are fairly balanced with the body of our dinosaur. So that's why I just drag them behind a little bit on the body. So this union we can call the legs and then we pretty much do the same thing again. We copy this union, bring it up and just make a few changes to create the arms. For example, we are bringing the point 0.1 curve even more inwards and scaling it quite a bit smaller. And we're just adjusting the direction of rotation of the, of the cylinders and we can also delete points if we want. We can round it up, scale it smaller and also make changes to the original settings of the goop and whatever else we chose in the curve settings. And that pretty much wraps up the base of our dinosaur already. Now we can select both of our unions and place the model where we want it to be so it's actually standing on the ground. And now I think it's finally time to give it some color. For that, make sure you have both of your unions selected and then let's have a look at our top bar where we find our materials menu. Here we want to click on the plus icon to create a new material and since we have both unions selected, it is automatically applied to all of what's in there as well. And at the right, we can now make change to our new material. For example, we can change the color and here we also want to increase the roughness a little bit because we don't want our dinosaur to be shiny and we can also increase the translucency for some more visible shadows. Now that's a lovely start I would say, I think it's looking good but obviously it's missing something. Let's give it some more character by adding some eyes. For that we just very simply get out a sphere and I'm gonna turn this into a black color and make it a bit glassy and a bit of metalness just so we have that shine in the eyes that you know eyes are just usually fairly glassy and then we want to bring it onto our character I'm not using the mirror on purpose because I want to make it a bit imperfect and a bit you know funny cute looking and yeah I think it does look very cute so far Now another quick and easy extra we can add is some detail to the feet. For that we want to get out a new cylinder and we can by the way scale the cylinder equally on both sides if we hold down ALT while scaling it on the edges. And here I'm just rounding this up a little bit as well and then scaling it quite small but a bit thicker than this and bringing it down to the feet. Um, I think you can already guess what it's supposed to become. And for this color I'm choosing a very light grayish yellow tone. I think that fits it very well. I also increase the roughness again because those kind of claws or I don't know how you call them, they're, they're usually more rough. And then we just copy it and rotate it a little bit to one side and the other and that pretty much increases the detail of the feet a bit more and it looks very cute and lovely still fitting the style I think. So it's a nice little extra that you can add. And yeah, that's basically our cute little dinosaur. Obviously they come in all forms and shapes and colors and there are so many possibilities that you can do really. But yeah, now I actually want to give this even more character, literally, by putting a character inside of it and making it like a costume, which is really cute, I think. So for that, I'm getting out a sphere, I'm turning it into a negative, but you can see it doesn't affect the body right now. That is because we need to actually also put it inside of the union where the curve of the body is. And now you can see how we can now subtract it. So I'm putting this just a little bit under the head and making it a bit smaller and also giving it a tiny bit of goop strength so it's more smoothed out as well. And also don't forget to give it the same color as the body otherwise it looks a bit weird. And yeah, then I go over to create the face of the character. That's the only thing really we need for this creation. And I'm speeding this up a little bit because all the techniques that are used for that I've already pretty much shown you. Um, for the face I actually use a rounded cube instead of just a sphere just to give it a bit more stylization. And then as you can see for the eyes I'm using the mirror, I'm copying the eyes, turning them into a cylinder, making them a bit wider, 
changing the color this is going to be the blush that's like just under the eyes which looks really cute i think i'm also turning it a bit sideways so it fits the face a little bit better experimenting with distances between yeah the eyes and the blush and stuff and then i'm giving it the nose a different color again for the mouth i'm using a cylinder this time without the mirror i'm turning it quite flat copying the same shape making it a bit longer so I can subtract with another shape from it. Um, giving it a bit of goop strength and that's how I create this cute little smiley mouth. I'm grouping this together into one thing because otherwise it would affect the other primitives in the face. And then I'm going to create some hair and for that I'm using basically just simple sphere based curves. I'm giving it a bit of a curl here and the cool thing about hair and curves is you only really need to create one big strand and then you can copy it around and it will look really good especially if you give it a bit of variation for that I'm just copying the shape and going in for individual curve points and just making them a bit longer a bit stretching in different directions and that gives it the variety that I need. And I'm finishing it up by giving the hair a reddish color that is very complementary to the green that I have on the dinosaur, so I think it fits well. And yeah, that is basically it for the creation part. Now let's come to the actual presentation part of our creation. And for that, we want to start by turning off the floor grid in the lights and environment panel. And then we go to a backdrop. Here we click on the plus icon to change an individual color for it. Here you can really experiment for yourself what you think suits your creation. You can also go for complementary colors to your actual creation if that's possible. Or you can choose a warm tone if you want people to feel cozy or a cold tone or something that is contrasty to your creation. It all really works depending on what you like. And then we also go into the global lighting. Make sure you choose it wisely. It really changes everything how your color, your shadows, your brightness is displayed. So click on a few and just see what looks best for your creations, very individual for each creation. And if you've done that, you can also choose some individual lights. You all find that at the top bar. And for the individual lights, you can do something basic like lighting it with a warmer color from one side and a colder color from the other side. That's what I like to do a lot. Or you can go really funky and do some crazy colors. Um, there's lots of possibilities. Another thing that looks quite good is like giving it a bit of a rim light from behind. Feel free to experiment here. Lighting is a lot about learning and experimenting and seeing what looks good to you as well. And yeah. Then once we're happy with what we have here, we basically go and publish our creation if we want to. For that, we will click on the share button at the top, click on publish, and then we can see our thumbnail. This is how our creation will be displayed on the discover page. We can then also type in a title, just call it dino character, and we add some hashtags to it. Those are labels that people can click on on the discover page and then they find your model in there. And you can also change your copyright settings if you don't want others to use your creations. But yeah, while practicing for this tutorial, I've also made different kind of dinosaur versions like this one or this one or this one. I'm actually really happy with this one. I think it turned out really cute and yeah, I'm very happy with this creation. So can't wait to see what kind of dinosaurs you guys make. We're very happy to see you guys creations, but it's of course also okay to just follow along with the video and recreate the dinosaur from the video. So yeah, just have some fun with it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.